Good morning. I am planning to make a couple of things with my sourdough. So I am going to feed it this morning so that I can let it rise and then I can use it. So I'm going to be adding a half a cup of flour and I'm not going to be getting rid of the discard because I want to have a little more. So I am just going to leave it in there and then I'm going to discard it the next time I want to use it. And a third cup of filtered water. I'm, not, I'm going to add it a little. I'm only going to add half to begin with because it was quite wet. I had maybe added a little more water yesterday than normal. So I don't want it too thin. I think this looks about perfect. I will put the lid back on and I will let it rise till probably around lunchtime. It is around nine o'clock right now and then we can proceed with making our dough. While I was waiting for the starter to rise, I made lunch and wow, look at that rise. That is definitely a very active starter. It just burst out of its container and went everywhere. So at this point, I am wanting to make two loaves. So I am making two recipes of the dough. The recipe I am using is from thecleverCarrot.com. It is her sourdough recipe. It is perfect for beginners. I am by no means anywhere near um, even an intermediate. I am very much a beginner with sourdough and this recipe is very basic and it's really delicious. I enjoy it. So I will try to link it down below and you can follow along and you can see the ingredients and the measurements and stuff like that that I'm using here. I am weighing all my ingredients. That is what the recipe calls for, so that is what I'm doing here. I did alter the recipe a little bit. Instead of just doing all-purpose or bread flour, I did use some whole wheat flour as well. I really like that. It's just a little, a little bit more um, to it, I guess. And yeah, that's what I did. I did one cup of whole wheat flour and then I did the rest all-purpose flour.
When adding the salt, it does look like a lot. I think I maybe did just a tiny little bit less than what it did call for, but you do want to add it. Um, the one recipe I did add quite a bit less because I just figured it looks like way too much and it was kind of bland. So you really do want to add the salt that it does ask for. Once you have added all your ingredients, you just mix it and keep kneading and mixing until it is fully incorporated. The dough is definitely on the drier side, but if you do knead it a little bit more, it will get a lot less dry and malleable, I guess. It won't be quite as dry, but it is more dry and crumbly, and that was something I wasn't quite expecting. So just a heads up, if you do make this recipe, it is normal, and it will definitely soften up a lot as it rises. Once it has come together and forms a nice ball, I put it in my oven with only the light on to rise. At this point, the dough has been rising for about an hour and I am doing a uh, first knead. And once I've kneaded it, I will put it back in the oven and let it rise again for a few hours until it has doubled or more than doubled in size. But even already, you can tell it has risen quite a bit and it looks a lot more like a normal, pliable, malleable dough. A lot of people use the stretch and fold method when they are kneading it. I don't. I have always just kind of tucked and folded it the way I am right now, just kind of rolling it around in my hands and folding it as I'm doing it. And it seems to be working really well. One of these days I will try the folding method and see if that really makes a difference. This loaf had some harder pieces of flour in the bottom that I just kind of picked out. I didn't want them in there. I'm sure they would have kind of stayed um, more dense and hard and I didn't want that in there. So I'm just picking those out and then I'm continuing to knead this one as well. And then they're gonna go in for their long rise.
At this point, they had risen for several hours and had more than doubled in size. So I am doing the final knead and I'm going to be shaping them and placing them into the containers or the dishes that I want them to actually bake in. And once I've done that, then they need to rise one more time. You guys, this, I love making sourdough, but it is a lot of waiting for it to rise. So that is what I'm doing right now. I am doing the last knead and then we get to do the last rise and then on to the fun stuff. Okay, let's be real, how cute is that? I mean, the painting job is nothing to write home about, but look at how cute it is. I'm so excited to see what it's gonna look like once it has baked. In the previous loaves that I have made, I don't think I made the cut quite deep enough, so I was trying to go quite a bit deeper here, and it definitely worked really well. I think I should have gone even deeper still in this one. The, the loaf one was really good. So I had my oven preheated to 450 degrees. At this point, I turned it down to 400 once I started baking the bread with the lids on. And after about 20 to 30 minutes, I take the, the lids off and it bakes the rest of the time without the lid on. And that's when it really browns up and gets really beautiful.
and just a few days later the wolf is already half gone so that I think tells you that it is really delicious and I definitely recommend that you try it and if you do let me know how you like it in the comments below. So this is my updated version of my trial with sourdough and sourdough starter. I think I have definitely come a little way since my first one and I just felt like I really needed to do an update. Um, one that looks a little more, uh, more presentable and also tastes better and has a lot more rise to it as well. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really hope this encouraged you and if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I will see you in the next one. Be blessed.